Hi there, I'm TJ Christensen, and today we're going to be making a Michigan shaped cutting board for a Mother's Day project. Uh, we'll be cutting it today on a ShopBot. Uh, the ShopBot we'll be using is a PRS uh, gantry style tool. It has a cutting surface of 96 inches by 48 inches. This is our Alpha system, and it will be what we use to cut this out. Mother's Day is just around the corner and looking to make a nice project for mom. And that's the beauty of the ShopBot is you can customize and make just about anything you can think of. So being from Michigan and being one that loves to be in the kitchen, going to make her a Michigan-shaped cutting board. Uh, with the ShopBot, you are always going to get up-to-date versions of Partwork software, which is our drawing software. With just a couple clicks and a few minutes, we'll be able to import a JPEG of the state of Michigan, give it a toolpath with our ShopBot software, and be cutting. Um, we're going to be creating a new file. There's a few parameters you need to type in. Um, the piece of wood that we have out in the shop is actually 11 inches wide and 22 inches tall. It's 3 quarters of an inch thick, 0.75. And now the now our software knows how big of a part we'll be working with out on the actual machine. Hit OK. We've now created our board into our computer, and it's time to start drawing. Um, this interface on the left side of the screen would be for drawing uh, parts and making the parts of your own, adding text. Uh, what we're going to be doing, though, for this file is actually going into Google and trying to find a JPEG of the state of Michigan and import it into our software. So, we'll bring up Google and type in Michigan Outline. Switch to the image feature, it'll bring up different images, JPEGs. With uh, Google, we can find the higher resolution one, which the higher the resolution, the, the, the better the lines will snap in our software. Just hit large. <clears throat> There's several different ones. We were really only interested in the lower peninsula of Michigan, being that that is where she is at. Um, you can find one that's either outlined by colors inside, if it has specific counties, it doesn't really matter. We'll be able to edit that in the software. This one popped up to the higher part of the screen, being the higher resolution. I'm going to grab this one, right click this, save picture as, <clears throat> Michigan Outline, so I can find it save it. Exit out of Google, bring back up the Partwork software. We know what our board size is. We're ready to rock. We just need to import it. Up here there is a two different import features. You can import vectors. So if you're coming from a different CAD program, you can actually import different vectors and bring them in. Or for us, we're actually going to import a bitmap for tracing. Is exactly what it says on the screen prompt. Find where your uh, image was saved. And Michigan Outline brings it in. Obviously, it's not to the size that we want for our screen, but that's fine. For right now, all I'm going to do is select it, and I'm going to come down here to the fit, fit vectors to bitmap. And the software itself will actually fit. Um, the, ve the vectors to the brought in image and then all we'll have to do is give it a toolpath and go and head to the shop and cut. So you can set how detailed you want your tracing to be. Uh, I'm going to give it a pretty strong one since we just want the outline of Michigan. We don't need the islands and stuff out in the Great Lakes. Fit the vectors by one click and you can hit close. Come over here and zoom in and make sure it's what you want. Um, you have to click on a specific vector now and just bring it out of the way and it shows you that it's actually traced. It's traced the upper peninsula as well and it's traced all the different islands down here if you zoom in. We're not interested in all of that stuff. We just want one 
main lower peninsula of Michigan. So I will sweep select. Let me get Michigan out of the way. We want to keep that. I, I can just hold my mouse, drag, selects everything, hit delete, that's gone. The only thing I have left is what I really want to use. So for Michigan, I'll bring it back into my board. I'd like to maximize the size of the state and cut the biggest one I can out of the material that I'm using. Double click, uh, upper right hand corner you can drag, you can also rotate down here if you needed to, but simply drag it to the size. You gotta make sure too, you're going right to the edge, you gotta remember you have a cutter that's gonna be coming around and it'll actually, quarter inch thick cutter we'll be using, we wanna make sure that we still have the wood on the material, or I'm sorry, the, the image on the material because we don't want it to nip off that part of the state. So I'm actually going to make this just a little bit smaller than the current board so I know that I've got a solid tool path all the way around. <clears throat> there would be our state. Um, so far I'm happy with it. I'm going to give it a tool path and preview it in the software to make sure it's exactly what I want before I go and cut it. That's another beauty of the ShopBot software is we are able to preview it here before we're actually out on the machine to make sure that we don't um, that we, the cut comes out the way we want it to. So right here is a uh, click over to switch to the tool path tab. I'll switch over. Now I'm ready to give this tool pass. We have different types of tool pass in the ShopBot software which um, you can create profiles, you can create pockets, the drilling operations. For this we simply just want to make a profile cut around the state of Michigan and cut that out. So the profile to tool path, we can set how deep we want it to cut. We know that our board is 0.75 inches, 3 quarters thick. I want to cut a little bit deeper than the material thickness to ensure that it's a through cut. And that's where we will see on the machine that there's a spoil board that we actually cut into that's a sacrificial board that is meant for this. So I'll go a little bit deeper. I need to select the bit that I want to use. There is a tool database here that lists all the different bits that come included with a ShopBot um, router bit starter kit or you can add bits of your own throughout your different cutting processes. I'm going to use a up spiral quarter inch bit. I select that. I'm good with that. This tells me that it will be cutting around in three passes with the current parameters. You are able to go in and edit the different parameters if you wanted to say cut deeper or faster. Since uh, I'm new to this for this operation, this is my first time cutting this file, I'm going to leave it as what, they t what the current parameters are. Do I want to cut on the outside or the inside? I want to cut on the outside because I want to keep the actual shape of the state. Click on the outside. You can pick if you want the direction you want the machine to go, clockwise or counterclockwise. For um, hardwood, I'm going to go with the climb direction. You can also switch to conventional if you want to go, say, counterclockwise or clockwise. Um, tabs are another thing you want to add because by the time that it makes the full 360 degree cut and it gets back over to the start point, the borders become loose inside the material. Simply adding a tab will hold the part in place until it's done. And then you simply just take a piece of sandpaper and sand off the tabs. Throw a couple in there and easy to get to spots for sanding. And this will hold the material in place. And this we'll see also out on the machine. I'm going to edit my tab lengths. Make sure that holds the material in place. Give this, uh, always name your tool paths. You want to make sure sometimes you have a, a project which will have 10 or 12 tool paths, so you want to make sure you give them a name. I'm going to do outside profile because that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm profiling the outside of this and hit calculate. You're going to get a warning saying, hey, your material is only this thick and you're cutting deeper then. The, material, the software is just warning us this is exactly what I wanted to do so I'm going to hit OK. This is also good to check because 
it might say 1.79 versus 0.79 and this is where you want to make sure the machine will always do what it tells you tell it to do so make sure you read your numbers and get your decimal places in the right place this is good this looks good this is the part where we get to preview the different um, the toolpath we can look at it dead on we can look at it from an angle and what we'll actually do is hit preview um, the toolpath and it'll bring a cutter in and it will cut out our material just like that you reset this and show you again from a different view I'm going to preview the toolpath so it shows it come in it makes its cuts shows that the tabs are right there. These tabs stay there to hold this Michigan cutout to the actual um, scrap piece. Otherwise this could come loose. So this looks good. I can zoom around and make sure I'm cutting all the way through. This looks right. I'm happy. I'm on the board. It's a through pass. The, the, the presentation of Michigan itself looks right as far as the profile um, I would go ahead at this point and save my toolpath uh, since I'm in my office right now I would save this to a jump drive and I would take it out to my machine in the garage and from that point I can load up the shopbot software the toolpathing software or the, I'm sorry the cutting software and we would be able to cut this part out so the ShopBot knows the distance between the end of your bit and the top of your work surface. We have to zero the bit. To zero the bit, we will need to put a, a zeroing plate underneath. The metal, when it touches here, makes a complete circuit. And then the software will recognize it and, sh and stop right when it hits the plate. Also written into the software is the thickness of the material of the plate. So then the machine will compensate for that and know when it's ready to cut the bits distance from the end of the bit to the top of the work surface. By doing this, we put the plate underneath, we ground the collet, and by hitting the C2 feature on the software, it will come down and zero our Z axis. It will go down twice, the first time at a faster pace, recognize it, come back up, and go down and make a more precise connection. Alright, the software will now tell us that we are zeroed in the Z axis, and make sure that we remove the alligator clip and the grounding plate before we move on. Alright, we have our piece of wood that we'll be using for the cutting board. Um, we need to attach this wood to the ShopBot surface. Uh, to do so, there are different options as far as vacuum hold down, um, clamping fixtures, but simply for one and done type of projects, we would do something simple as putting a couple pilot holes in, running some screws into the four corners, and holding the product there. That will hold our material to our ShopBot, and then as we showed in the software, the tabs will actually hold the Michigan cutting board into the scrap material. Using hardwoods like oak and maple, it's good to drill the four pilot holes. That way you don't split the wood. The way we drew the software, the Michigan in the software was at the zero zero point, we had the state of Michigan facing up into the Y position. So, I will place my board just like that, right at zero, zero, and the length in the, in the Y position. This spoil board is here to be cut into, to be drilled into. After time, you will resurface it and flatten it, and after several hundred hours of use, you will actually replace it with another sheet of three-quarter inch MDF. It is a sacrificial board. It is meant to be drilled and screwed into. These screws are important in the location. You can put a screw in a place where the cutter will be coming and that nice $30 cutter runs into your screw and wrecks the carbide tip. That's why it's important to know. On bigger projects, 
it will actually draw a hold down tool path that will go and locate all the screws. For this simple Michigan, I know that I left an inch at the bottom so I can put screws at the bottom and screws at the top and the Michigan is within those. But for bigger projects, make sure you take into account where you put your hold down screws. The board is now held down. The machine has been zeroed in the X, the Y, and the Z. And at this point, it would be time to run the file. ShopBot has completed its work, cut out the profile of the state of Michigan exactly to size, or exactly to the size that we specified, and it looks really great. Um, at this point, it's time to remove from the ShopBot and finish the work by hand, by your own hand. Um, remove the screws. As you can see, the tabs that we talked, that we showed you in the software, have held the state of Michigan into the scrap material. I can move the material around and it stays with the that stays in there. To remove the tabs, simply flip the project over and you see the different tabs that we located. A utility knife works great for removing the tabs. You don't want to just press them out, you want to cut them, otherwise the wood can split. There's your state of Michigan. You simply have a little dimple left right here, which you can touch up with an edge sander or a hand sander. And go ahead and sand the project's corners off and wipe it down with a mineral oil or a butcher block oil and your Michigan cutting board is ready to be put into use. All right, we just got done demonstrating a simple bring in an image and cut a simple one part of a project. Being able to have a PRS 9648 gives you options to do a lot bigger and more complicated projects. Uh, one for instance would be a folding stool. This is a project that uses no hardware. It's all mortise and tenon joints cut on the shop bot precisely so this thing will fold up and unfold to a folding stool that can be used camping, fishing, at the beach. Easy to fold, easy to carry. None of the joints are seen, they're all hidden. The dowel holes are hidden, the joints for the mortise and tenons are hidden. This is all done by doing pocketing tool pass and drilling tool pass on the shop bot. You can just barely see where that joint would be. And you can see that the dowels have hidden and through holes. All stuff that can be done in the shop bot. This part, this project when it's laid out flat, takes about a two foot by two foot area. And all nicely nests the pieces together, goes together with nothing more than a rubber mallet and a bottle of glue. To get bigger, you need about a four foot by four foot size table 
and this will give you a, a nice patio chair. This chair folds up as well into two pieces. They slide together, make a perfect deck chair, beach chair, comfortable to sit on. Again, no outside fasteners, everything cut on the shop bot. The same mortise and tenon joinery, using pockets, using profiles. This chair is all cut in about a four foot by four foot uh, sheet of plywood and cut on the shop bot. And folds up nicely for carrying and for storage. Another project is a, is a scooter, a folding scooter, like the little Razor scooters. This one comes equipped with foot grips, a brake for stopping, and a complete turn. So here is a, another ShopBot project. This one does have some outside fasteners for you know the axles and the wheels, but the groove was cut with the grooving tool path. All the parts were nested, and this was cut in about a six inch wide by six foot long piece of red oak. These are some different shop projects that you can get into.